Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. We are back with pick a card readings. Guys, last week I just needed a day to get on top of everything. I was actually really busy last week. I was at my desk until about, I had a good full day off on Sunday. I really needed it, so that was good. But now I'm back to doing pick a card. We've still got Polo Coelho in the jar. We've got a lot of his quotes here, so we're going to get into those. I also have the Vedic Astrology deck, which we're going to draw from as well. And I've taken out last week's cards and I'm going to make a little spreadsheet of the cards that we use. So that way we get to see every single card. So this week, I think the topic we're going to do is something really generic and simple. I'm thinking something like, what message do your guides have for you? Some, something really just classic and simple like that. And I've got a few topics for the weeks ahead that are going to be really interesting. So feel free to choose from group one, group two or group three, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group one. If you chose group number one, then you are in the right place. Let's shuffle and see what is going on for you. What, what do your guides have to say? And I think what we'll do is we'll take two of these and we'll flip them over. We'll see. We'll see what comes straight away. Just get a feel for the energy. All right, I think that one wants to be here. Let's take it. And then we'll get some more cards in a moment. All right, straight away, three of wands. Lovely. You're looking ahead. You're looking forward. You're planning, you're strategizing. This is good. Ooh, the tower. Okay. More information needed. I think we're going to take another one of these because I did see another one pop out when I was shuffling these. Let's see what's going on. Tower moment. I had a bit of a tower moment last week. Basically, I was just overworked and I needed a bit of time. That one really wants to be here. Okay, well, there's something. Let's see, hang on. Hmm, something making a lot of noise. Is it that? I'm gonna move this. It could be that. <laughs> interesting so we've got hang on let's no it's not doing it now okay good it's probably just me but there was something rattling over there hmm something rattling something making a noise and I don't know what it is that could be part of the reading let's see what this is right four of swords oh my goodness well that was a bit of a tower moment right there gee that's loud. I will pick that up, but not right now. Hmm. What is this? Tell a moment. You need rest. Something crashes. I was not expecting that at all. Interesting. Okay, let's keep going here. The plot is thickening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw everything and we're going to see. We're going to see what comes through. So we'll take one from the Vedic Astrology deck here. I am so curious now to find out what's going on here for you and what all this big energy is about because there is something I hardly ever drop things. <laughs> I'm very careful. You can ask my mum, she'll tell you. I'm not I'm not a clumsy person. Hmm. Now this is a beautiful Art Deco regular playing cards deck. And this is a playing cards deck which features Alice in Wonderland. Okay, and we'll take one of these. No, I don't want to. I want one. Yeah, that one. Okay, let's flip them all over and we'll see what's going on. 
Group one, I'm so intrigued. How about we start here? Community. Okay. Number seven. Right. Let's go here. Kind of going all out of order here today. Two of Pentacles. Mm, this, this is linking in here, I think, with this Three of Wands. There's a little bit of a holding pattern and you're looking ahead. You need rest, but there is something that's transforming, that's changing in your world. Let's go here. Oh, how interesting, the Queen of Swords. And look at that picture. So it says here Queen of Spades, but of course in Tarot I'm converting this to the Queen of Swords. And to me the Queen of Swords, she's very much about boundaries. And look at her finger is pointed. Wow. And she needs to set boundaries. This could be a thing of you needing to set boundaries. Let's take more of a look here. The Four of Hearts, which would be the Four of Cups. And this is quite appropriate. This is coming right under the Four of Swords here. This can be a card of boredom. This can be a card, actually, that you're bored with what is, but you're actually not seeing the really good thing that is being presented to you at this time. And it's really interesting with this imagery here. Because we've got this person, this could be, you know, in the traditional tarot, it's three cups that the person is looking at. And then there's like one cup being presented from the sky. This hand is coming out of the sky. How amazing. And she's got these cherries. And this person is, though, looking but not sure whether or not to take it. Interesting. We'll come back to that what we have from our oh okay Vedic astrology deck we have Mercury in the second house earns through public speaking through finance logic so the person's logic is built on the teachings of their family lineage this person will be religious philosophical becomes rich is shrewd with money can be thrifty interesting and that is coming under a pentacles card. I think at this time, you're trying to figure out where you fit. You're also trying to figure out your community. Possibly trying to figure out next moves, in which direction you want to go. Maybe you're reassessing communities that you're part of or your work. Maybe you're not quite satisfied at work. There's something about, there's a direction change or you want to change directions or you are kind of trying to work out next steps. And this feels really good. This feels like good energy. It feels like the community that you're in, it's, it seems fine but I get the sense that you know that there's more out there in the world you know that this isn't it where you are this is currently not it the tower moment energy I'm still a little bit puzzled from that and I'm still looking at the things that are on the floor realizing I have to pick them up let's we're gonna we're gonna come to the well this this is very appropriate where it's seated right here with the Queen of Swords. I think there is some kind of boundary that you need to set at this time. And it feels like a boundary that you need to set in order to rest, but in order to do some exploration. Because it also feels like at this time yeah you're not sure of next steps there's something you're not sure of I just had the phrase come in like don't want to upset the apple cart because one of the objects that fell just now it, there's an apple on the floor interesting 
maybe you think that by you setting a boundary it could cause a tower moment that is interesting this is so true i know this about myself actually because yeah i really don't like to set boundaries it kind of upsets me or hurts me to set a boundary or say no to someone or say you know and it is it's just that word no it's just i can't do it you know and you don't need to have a reason but it, isn't it hard sometimes to set a boundary it can be really difficult and perhaps you might perceive that the setting of a boundary is going to cause a tower moment but i actually i'm not getting the feeling that it will this is this is peaceful and harmonious here i get the sense that you need to set some kind of boundary so that you're able to get some rest you need some rest that's important and in that rest you will be able to see other options this person here is you know and it is that four of cups thing where perhaps the three cups are somewhere on the ground here but he, this person is actually looking up at what's being presented what's coming out of the sky what is coming next this person has the time and the space to look that up and why do they have the time and the space to what well, to to look up and to see what's new what's coming why do they have the time and the space well because they set a boundary you know they 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 set the boundary with the two of pentacles this is that back and forth energy you know things just and some people view this as juggling it's true we can see this card in that way but I quite like to see it that it's kind of like an infinite loop and things are just going to keep going the same unless you set the boundary. And I think you setting a boundary, you have a fear that there's going to be a tower moment, that it's going to upset the apple cart as we've got an apple on the floor right now. <laughs> you know, I think that you might perceive that, oh gosh, if I set a boundary, you know, if I speak up, Okay, Mercury in the second house. This could be a family boundary that you need to set at this time. You might be worried. You might think, yeah, if I speak up, it could backfire on me or it might not be a good thing. But I tell you what, if you don't speak up, you risk burnout. You know, you risk not being very productive or able to do much at all. And I've done that. I know what that is. And that's... You know, and that's why, for example, I had to take a break from pick a card last week. I was still at my desk on Friday um, doing lots of stuff. But uh, yeah, I yeah, every now and then I just have to have to take the time out. And I miss doing these. I love doing these. It's so much fun. This kind of way I relax. Let's see what Paulo Coelho has to say. It's an interesting situation. What, what I would say is set the boundary. Uh, it, it'll be a good thing for you. Yeah, and, and you're not going to upset anything. This is all looking quite good. Sometimes the it's we who perceive that if I say no, it's going to cause a meltdown out there. It's not. You know, it, it's really not. Oh, fantastic. This is so perfect. Perfect people don't drink don't fight don't make mistakes and don't exist yes that's so true and it's amazing that we started this off with you know a bit of a like i i dropped this lovely well it's a tray thankfully it's like made out of plastic so it hasn't broken but yeah we have an apple on the floor now <laughs> i'm gonna have to pick that up it's okay See, that's the thing. Yeah, because there was frustration. There was this noise, this rattling noise. I had to do something. I couldn't keep doing this reading if I didn't move that tray, if I didn't set the boundary, if I didn't sort that out. You know? And the, the cleanup is going to take two seconds, and it's not a big deal. And I'm sure the apple doesn't mind. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, this is beautiful. And an enthusiastic heart 
finds opportunities everywhere. Absolutely. And this could be that thing of you figuring out next steps, you figuring out, okay, what work do I want to do? What thing do I want to commit myself to? Where do I belong? You know, in terms of what I'm doing, I get a sense that this is career. Actually, I think this community thing is, you know, you're wanting to establish yourself uh, career wise. And if you're enthusiastic, you can go anywhere you want. If you're enthusiastic and passionate about a particular subject, an area, a community, something, you know, that you want to get involved in. Enthusiasm is the thing that will open any door, it seems. Yeah, I, I, I agree. If you love what it is, and I know this because when I was going for various jobs in advertising, and, and the interview would always go well. And why would it go well? Because... Uh, it would always go well because I loved what I was doing. I loved it so much and people could see that. And people used to tell me, well, we had to give you the job because you clearly love what you're doing so much. So, yeah. I used to, interviews used to be where I could do well. But if they had ever, you know when they give you those exams? Oh, I would always do badly in those. <laughs> there was a job I went to one time and all the interviews did great. And they were like, oh, could you do this little, you know, mathematical quiz and I don't know logic and this and that they get you to do so I'm terrible at those I'm really bad but if it's interviews because I know that an enthusiastic heart enthusiasm that's what you need you just need to love what you do and that people will feel that people make a lot of effort not to remember not to accept their immense magical potential definitely yes yeah, and that's a huge amount of effort and that's painful and that's, you know, that's um, all that stuff of being ill and depressed and there's a lot of effort to do all of that actually. Whereas if we embrace our gifts and offer them up and try, which is hugely vulnerable, I know, believe me, I know how hard it is to, to do that, but it, that's actually the easier way to live. You know, and, and you'll find that people will like what you do. And you'll find that, this is what I found doing YouTube. Every single person on the planet has an audience. Everybody, right? There's, there are people for everyone. That's, that is what YouTube has taught me. If there's one thing, uh, that's one of the main things it's taught me. That, you know, that, you know, whatever it is you do and you love, if you share that on YouTube, you will find that there will be people who will come and support you. It's amazing. Like, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have known until I started, until I tried. Guys, I'm going to have to wrap this one up, but this has been so much fun to do. If you have enjoyed this reading, please let me know in the comments below. I'm behind on comments, but I'll get around to everything. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two, then you are in the right place. Let's shuffle and see what's happening for you. And we will draw some of these cards early just to see what's going on. And we'll get some more as we go. I hope you're having a good week wherever you are. Okay, let's see. Let us begin see what's going on oh two of coins we just had that two of pentacles wow oh this is a really sweet de depiction of that look at that she's holding these little little babies how cute she's juggling she's quite literally juggling two little baby creatures okay well i think that's very that's a very clear context of juggling in a very hands-on kind of a way. You might be quite busy grouped. You certainly are busy. Gosh, and look at this depiction of the Eight of Coins, Eight of Pentacles. This is quite interesting. I've never seen one like this before. Okay. Well, I know this card to be that you're working hard. But her, her face is quite interesting there. Hmm. I'm not sure how happy she is working so hard. Okay, 
Well, let's get into it. See what else comes. The hanged man. Okay. So something suspended or you're waiting. This can be read in that way. Another way I like to read this is one okay, one other way of reading this is that you are looking at something from another perspective, right? So sometimes because you're upside down, so you're seeing things from a totally different perspective. Another way that I like to read this, which might make sense in the context of these cards, is that you are you're putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Actually, that's one of the ways that I do read this card. We'll draw another one here. Isn't that interesting? I want more information already. Yeah, same as group one. But what I'll do is I'll do the same as what I did with group one. We'll draw all of them now and we'll see what comes. So I'll take one of these. If this is upside down, I'll make it the right way up. Because I think some of these are Well, some are upright and some are, I'll take that one. Okay. And we'll take one of these. This is a regular playing card deck. And it's themed, the theme is Alice in Wonderland, which is so sweet. I must read, you know, I've got the book. I think it's, it's by Lewis Carroll, isn't it? I've got it in London. Just haven't, well, I, I can't get there very easily at the moment. I will get back and I will read it eventually, but I should brush up on Alice in Wonderland because it is really a terrific story and there's so much symbolism and, you know, it's very rich with, well, all kinds of things are in there. And I know Caroline Mace is a huge fan of Alice in Wonderland. She always refers to it. I think Jordan Peterson does as well. Okay. Right, let's start here. Aha, the thinking man. Yes, this is a great card. Two feathers in the cap, three pointed crystal. I love this card. Okay, excellent. Let's see what else we've got. Let's see what's here. The Queen of Wands. Wow, and she's beautiful. And so happy. Okay. Let's see what's in this Alice in Wonderland. All right, so this is the Five of Cups. Hearts, Cups, Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups in Tarot is a card. Well, one of the ways I see it is it can be heartbreak. It can be someone who's crying over the fact that now, is it two or three cups? Some of the cups are, you know, toppled over, but some of the cups are standing. Okay. You do have a lot to be grateful for. And in this depiction here, this white rabbit, yeah, see, I would need to learn a little bit more about Alice in Wonderland. But what I'm noticing is the gratitude is all the things that he has around him, this beautiful rabbit. I'm not getting a sad vibe from this five of cups at all. And I'm tuning into the, like the, the gratitude for what is. That's the energy I'm going to draw from this. Okay, so we've got the ten of pentacles. Wow, and look at that dress. Gosh, that's amazing. This, I think it's, this is Art Deco style, isn't it? I should remember the name of the, it's a famous painter who's made all of these. Okay. And the Vedic Astrology deck. Oh, nice. We have Venus in the ninth house. Yes. Blessed with spouse, wealth, children, highly fortunate, famous, loved, passion for work, adores art, history and traveling, loves philosophy and culture. Absolutely. Pretty sure Ramdas had his Venus in the ninth there. And he certainly was a thinking man. Interesting Ramdas has come up. 
Okay, what do we have going on here? I think with these cards, it does feel like some form of burnout. I think you're working hard. I think, and I think that angels and guides are acknowledging your hard work. I think they're enormously proud of you. I think that they see that you're working hard to get to this position where you are really just free and abundant and happy. That's kind of being confirmed here. Queen of Wands and Nine, mm, Venus in Ninth House. This is, this is very in sync and I think you're working towards this. And of course we've got the Ten of Pentacles here. So again, this to me feels like this is matching up quite nicely. So I'm seeing there is a little bit of uh, a, a divide here with, with, you know, this you are steadily making your way towards massive prosperity, this place in your life where you are free to be as creative as you want. You're being creative. It's all going on. There's ease. It's, it's happening. But I think there's something in your world right now that you could be overthinking. I think maybe, yeah, too much in your mind, possibly at this time. So take whatever messages apply to you, okay, and reject what doesn't. But what I'm kind of seeing is that you might be overthinking something at this time. You might also be looking at what's not working and where you put your focus is you're going to create more of that. So the way out of this situation is really just to be looking around at what you do have, what is good, and to be focusing more on that and growing that. Keep your focus on what you have and what's good and what's working, and you're going to grow this. Okay. And it doesn't feel like it's going to be hard work for you to do that. It just feels like a small pivot. It feels like a small little, you know, just a little tweak <laughs> to what's happening in your world at the moment. Some small tweak is going to get you more steadily on this road of building your abundance, of building your freedom, of building, you know, that, that track that you want to get to where it's just going smooth. It's just small little pivots and off you go. And I was telling a friend the other day that one of the things I've been going through is, yeah, so I, so I sometimes feel like my car, I like, like, like if my body was a vehicle or something, it's this old car that's like sputtering a little bit. But, but what I know in my heart is that I'm going to get to this place where I'm just putting my foot on the accelerator and I'm just going for it. And I don't need brakes and it's just flow, flow, flow and, you know, just go for it. And it's just like, that is my dream kind of thing, just to have this energy that's just going fine and I'm not having the ups and downs of burnout or, you know, um, or this kind of thing. I don't have too much burnout anymore. I must admit, I am becoming more and more consistent all the time. But I had a big burnout in 2020, knocked me out for several months. I'm not going to create that again. I'm just not. <laughs> I've decided. I'm like, no, not doing that again. I've done it. Don't need to do it anymore and what it means all it means is I know this scene really well and what I've learned is that take care of yourself just you know you're juggling you're working eight of coins eight of pentacles you're working hard two of coins back and forth back and forth hard work you're possibly putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation you might be overthinking and all it is, all it takes is this heart, this cup, get into the heart center, be grateful for what you do have and build up on that. And same as your body. One of the things I do is, for example, when I've got a headache or when I've got a problem in my body, you know how all your attention goes to the headache or the problem in your body, right? One of the things I do is when I notice myself doing that, I try and put all my attention throughout my body and appreciate wow but everything else is working so well you know, I've got so much health everywhere else and that's one of the things I do with my mind with my busy mind right instead of focusing just exclusively on the problem in my body or in my life <clears throat> I'm trying to do this more and more as well but you know 
focus, put all the attention on what's going great. And when you do that, you discover sometimes it's like 75%, 80%, 85% is going amazing. You know, yet we put all of our attention on the, the smaller things that aren't going so well. So another phrasing of that, which I have used in these pick a card readings is the quote I got from, I think it was one of the coaches I watched and he said, don't spend $20 on a five cent problem. And I really like that. feels like that quote could be a little bit applicable here. I might have even used it in group two before, but yeah, I like that one. I think you, I have, I'm sorry if it's repetitive. I try to, I try as much as I can to remember what's going on here so I can be unique each time. Well, that's what the quotes do. Let's have a look here. Ooh, life is like cooking. Before choosing what you love, try everything. Yeah, I like that. It's so true. We do need to try everything. Yep, and I feel like that's, I've, yeah, I've certainly tried lots of different things, especially with my career. And that has been a good thing because I end up using everything that I've learned and tried. You know, it's, it's worth doing that. Oh, camera battery's flashing. No, don't worry. <laughs> I'll just replace the battery. From the moment that you feel enthusiastic about everything, you know that you are following your heart. Yes, we had a bit of this heart message come up in the, the enthusiasm message came up in group one. And similar here, the, the heart, this is your answer. I knew that this card is your way into the abundance that you seek and the prosperity and all this good creativity and fortune and beautiful people and all the stuff that you want, right? It's following your heart. That's what you have to do. Enthusiasm. What are you enthusiastic about? What would you do for free? You know, what would you do if, if money was no object? What do you love and that you'd just do anyway? Yeah, that's great. All right. And the camera battery, it hasn't toppled over yet. We're on a winning streak here. <laughs> There's no burnout in the camera just as yet. Let's see. All right. Start doing what you want to do and everything else will be revealed to you. Yes. This is also what Karl Lagerfeld talks about. He talks about the fact that ideas come while you work. He's like, if you're waiting for the idea, forget it. He's like, start working and the ideas will come. I love that. And this is, this is exactly that. So it feels like, and it feels like you have been working, but maybe you have, you're not putting, you're not pouring your heart into your dreams. And it is this thing of, try not to spend all your time building someone else's dream or in the job try and devote some energy to your dreams to your dream career what it is that you really want to do that's going to be important as well group number two but i want to thank you so much for tuning in let me know how you get on in the comments below i'm catching up with comments hopefully tomorrow so i love hearing how these go for you it really helps me uh, to keep going actually and I look forward to seeing you next time hi there group number three if you chose group number three then you are in the right place let's shuffle and see what's been going on for you lately and hopefully we're going to find out what messages your guides have for you at the moment so with the first two groups, what I've been doing is I've been looking at the first three cards and then I've been drawing some more. So, oh, terrific start. Ace of Wands. Yes. This is considered by many readers to be a yes card. So it's funny I just said yes. This is if you are looking for some kind of answer. Well, the answer is yes. If you're wondering about something, you've got a yes on the table. Okay, great start. Look at her expression. She is a bit spooked, isn't she? She's like, wow, it's like I've been wishing for this for so long and now it's here. What? <laughs> Amazing. It's got that feel to it. Oh, five of cups. We kind of just had that in group two. Wow. Okay, and it's three cups depicted that have been knocked over, but there are two still left standing. Not only are there two here, there's... A bottle of wine there what else is there 
Oh my gosh, is that lobster? Wow, well that's a terrific banquet. I mean, there's a whole banquet here. Grapes, she's in paradise as well. And yet she's, she's crying over these three. I did say something to this effect in the last group. It's really interesting, all the three groups are kind of linking this time. I did say that, you know, sometimes when we have a problem, we're focused on the 25% the or the, you know, 10% that's not going right but there's so much health and abundance all around us. So we've always got to bear that in mind when this card comes up. All right, yeah, Six of Swords, yeah. Okay. Moving on, moving away, moving away from something. And that's not to worry, it doesn't mean forever. It just means that at this time it might be appropriate for you to to move forward to move to move away from from whatever's going on or whatever's been going on let's shuffle and get one more and then we'll see aha uh -huh. okay oh well, we'll take that one it's popped out Eight of Pentacles, amazing, we just had that. She's quite hard at work there, she's concentrating. Not like in group two, where the Eight of Pentacles, I think the expression on the face of that person wasn't so, wasn't so, wasn't so content. This is nice, this is, this is good energy here. And this, this is kind of saying to me, you know, it's time to move away, from this, whatever it is that's happened here, and and to be your work will be a good good place to to put your energy, to be building your world, to be building your empire, you know, to be building yourself up, to be getting strong. Let's take one of these. We'll take one of these. This is Alice in Wonderland, just regular playing cards. They're quite sweet. And we've got an Art Deco deck here. I think it's Art Deco. I hope I've got that right. Someone, a famous illustrator whose name I've forgotten. <laughs> I'll have to look it up, find it. Uh, one of these and one from the Vedic Astrology deck. These, are, I'm loving these, they shuffle so well. The quality is really high. I'm impressed with the printer who made these. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's take them. They really wanna be here. Okay, well, you're lucky, you get two. Right, so you're gonna have Ketu in the fourth house, Saturn in the ninth house. So Ketu in the fourth, separation from mother or home country, deprived of mother's nourishment may lose or inherit property exceptional reversals at life's end okay saturn in the ninth feels distant from father marriage is delayed works long hours higher education comes after hard work it can be delayed education can be delayed as well follows and respects the law okay it's quite a lot there Oh, man holding a heart. You know, I thought this, I, when we were up here, honestly, I was thinking that this, just that on its own made me think of, see, like as her expression, look at that. And I said this thing about, you know, she's wished for this her whole life and now it's here. And that, what, what do you wish for your whole life and now it's here? It, and it, it would be a partner, right? It would be this. <laughs> And if you're a guy watching this, then think of a girl, okay, or whatever, however you like this. Like, yeah, I, I totally saw this situation up here. And to me, it does seem like, yeah, okay, the, the wise thing to do. I mean, if we're just following this story exactly, you know, he turns up, she'll be happy like anything, right? But then something happens. She's, she's crying, she, she, she's upset. She has to move on, 
She has to leave him. She has to throw herself into work. I mean, it's just, it's written, right? It's just written right there. Let's see if these two offer us anything new because this is saying marriage is delayed okay and then this is some kind of separation from home so perhaps you are at this time you're maybe you're not in your place of home for example let's take a look and see what's in here okay the king of clubs this is the king of wands so this is him right <laughs> that's basically he is this yep okay wow and the queen of swords yeah look at that she's putting down a boundary she's saying no there's something's gone on in here in this love story and what it is is something has gone on and really if i'm to read this quite literally it's something to do with a, a man that she has had to put a boundary in place she's had to leave look at that and she might have had to leave her home country even okay so that's pretty amazing we've got a delay to marriage with saturn in the ninth house and we've got this this person this lady is working i mean this is a very literal story that's going on here that's incredible so we can we can take it in that way but equally how else can we take all of this the, i mean definitely this queen of hang on a minute didn't we have this is the queen of Swords. oh we had the queen of swords in the alice in wonderland deck in group one got it okay right well we've got the queen of swords here now and she's having to set a boundary that's what I know. And boundaries like this can lead to somebody being upset, somebody being left out in the cold, somebody, you know, it's a part of life. Yeah, and boundary setting is not easy, guys. Uh, one thing I've come to discover is that, like, I really don't like to do that. <laughs> I, I, one of the things I've discovered, actually, recently in my self exploration is yeah I, like the last thing i want to do is set a boundary it, it almost kind of hurts me to do that sometimes i really i don't like doing it it's not fun and i know when i worked in advertising we used to have this with our clients where the client will say and you know in a, in a corporate context in a work context so if we're looking at this as a work thing maybe in some of you here maybe you're in a work situation where you're dealing with something i remember in in work client would always say oh, we want this we want that and uh, my bosses whoever my boss was would always say yes 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 i used to say come on you're supposed to say no sometimes you know because <clears throat> some of the art some, some of the things that they wanted were terrible and we're the artists we're the ones who've been doing this our whole lives and yet yeah that used to frustrate me so much <clears throat> i used to wonder why aren't we why aren't we saying no to the clients a bit more? And that's how Ogilvy became like one of the best agencies in the world because they actually used to say no to the clients. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is just, um, maybe some uh, throat chakra clearing is happening for this group, I'm not sure. Wow, look at that. Courage is the first spiritual quality that you need to have. Yes, this is exactly in line with the work of Dr. David Hawkins courage is level 200 <clears throat> and courage is when you know from 0 to 200 so 0 to 190 i think 190 is pride something like that that is in the realm of fear and that's where lack and limitation illness tiredness worry anxiety all that stuff is there 0 to 190 the moment you step into 200 courage which is 200 is courage it's also truth that's where all the healing begins and that's where love is and that's where willingness and acceptance and goodness and all of that stuff is there and i think the one who sets the boundary you need courage to do that there's some kind of boundary thing going on in this group <coughs> And 
there's some kind of throat chakra thing going on here too. Wow, that's amazing because my voice has been fine all day. Although the first reading I had to do today uh, with my client, I sent that off and yes, there was a little bit of throat chakra clearing that came up in that reading. Yesterday's reading was fine though. Let's have a look. <coughs> Okay, it says here, if you only walk on sunny days, you'll never reach your destination. Wow, I love that. Yeah, that's actually a really great, great quote for anyone who's writing a book. I know we've got some authors in the audience and that is classic for an author because it's a big project and you got to do a little bit of work each day. You can't only work when you're inspired. What about in a love context? Hmm. Maybe this is needed for the, the one who's setting the boundary. You know, we can be loving when we set boundaries. Because I'm kind of thinking about being more loving. Let's, let's take the, another quote and see. <coughs> because it's not unloving to set a boundary. Sometimes we perceive it that way. I know I have. But like, it's loving to you <laughs> to set a boundary. Because there's something about this energy. It's like this, this. A man holding a heart and this king of clubs, king of wands, right? He's out of control, <laughs> this one. Like, he's just going to rush in and run amok, especially if she's pretty together and a realist and Saturnian, right? If she's Saturn energy, how, how is this thing going to work out? Because he's a wild man. Nobody can tame him. And maybe that's all. Do you know, I've been watching this TV show called Made in Chelsea. I've been watching the old episodes and <clears throat> I've been watching this thing with this. He's a bit of a narcissistic character and yeah, he's kind of, he's untamable. And they, they keep, he needs, to, the untamable one needs to meet this queen of swords. That's what needs to happen. Will they ever get together? I don't know. Let's see what's in here. And then there's one more. Let's just take it. We have a 14 minute mark. I'll hurry along. Uh, the great wisdom of life is that we can, there we go, be masters of the things that try to enslave us. Ooh, the plot thickens. Because in the context of this, like the narcissistic wild man who doesn't know boundaries and she has to put boundaries in and she has to walk away and she has to throw herself into her work. I, I love this. I totally understand this. And I think, yeah, and talk about the narcissist empath dynamic because narcissist wants to well, I don't know about enslave the empath, but definitely consume. It's like this, somebody's like all consuming, like, oh, I just wanted to like take you and just, this person's like, no, <laughs> let's keep going here. I really do hope this is someone's situation. And see, when we look at it through tarot, it's really nice because we can be lighthearted about it, you know, and we can have some fun in this space. And that's one of the things I love about tarot. We can kind of, yeah, things don't have to be so serious. Saturn in the ninth, you know, seriousness in a place of fortune and romance and, and love. And, but Saturn's here, you know, it's like queen of, queen of swords turns up. It's like, no, be disciplined. Let's have a look here. Oh, this is beautiful. Stunning. Absolutely perfect. Love this. Oh, and the thingy's gone red. Doesn't matter. I'll, I'll start again if we get cut off. Yes, where were we? Here. The beauty of truth. Whether it is bad or good, it is liberating. Absolutely stunning. We've got, where do we have courage? Yeah, look at this. We're talking about the truth. 
it's never fun to be the person who puts the boundary in. I get it. It's not. It's, it's not a good way to get popular. It's not. It's you know being this person here is no picnic. Okay, being the queen of swords. It's not a picnic. It's hard. It's like this. It's you know. It's Saturnian in nature. It's tough love. It's the tough love fairy, which is what the crappy childhood fairy keeps going on about, right? That is what this is. But if you are placed in this position, I think the guidance is, I think there's a lot of things that are cheering you on that are saying, yes, it's the right move for you to, to, to go, to go away and to build up your career, build up your health, build up your strength, build up everything. You did wish for all of this, okay, you did. But it came in, it wasn't the right thing. For now, it might change. You don't know. But the truth is, the truth is that that what you, you weren't going to get what you were hoping for from here anyway. I think the truth is you have needed to set boundaries. You need to walk away, and you need you need to work on yourself. You, you need to work on your business, or you need to work on your career, or you need to be grounded, you need to feel good in your health, you need to be free as well. Because I think otherwise this situation with this person would have been quite codependent or enmeshed or, you know, it wouldn't have been healthy for either of you. And you've needed to, to walk away from something. I think you're doing amazingly well, group number three, if this is you. If the guidance is you need to set the boundary, set the boundary. Do it, you know. Um, this may also be a little indicated to someone that it's time to move out of home if, if you've been at home or if you've been, if you are somewhere where it's it's time to move on. This could be a thing of yeah, or that or this is indicating that you are now getting ready to leave home and go back into the world again. There are a huge number of people who are at home huge number massive number and this has been coming up in some of the tarot readings I've been watching as well where people say yeah there's lots of people who they've gone back to the family home and they've needed to be there for one reason or another they need to care for someone else or the job didn't work out or they're starting a business so there's lots of reasons why people have had to go home or they are somewhere where they're not like me for example I should be in London but you know I'll be going back of course I will um, but yeah this is indicating that you are getting ready to go back out into the world. That is going to happen. But good on you for being truthful, for being honest, for being truthful to yourself. This is the hard work. And this is showing me that you're prepared to do it. You're prepared to build yourself into this magnificent person. You're doing it. You're doing amazing. You're doing amazing group number three. This has been a stunning reading. I've loved doing this. Great energy here. And I'm going to wish you well. Take care. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you next time. Uh, leave me a message. Let me know how you get on with this reading. And I look forward to seeing you next time.